My name is Dr. Adam Farber, and I would like to talk to you today about ulnar collateral ligament, or UCL, injuries. To understand ulnar collateral ligament injuries, you must first understand normal elbow anatomy. This slide shows a view of the front of the elbow joint. The elbow is a hinge joint composed of three bones. The upper arm bone, known as the humerus, is marked by the green outline. The two bones of the forearm are the radius, marked by the yellow outline, and the ulna, marked by the red outline. This slide shows a side view of the elbow joint looking at the inside portion of the elbow. Again, the humerus is marked by the green outline, the ulna is marked by the red outline, and the radius is marked by the yellow outline. The ulnar collateral ligament, or UCL, is the main stabilizing structure on the inside portion of the elbow joint. It connects the humerus, or upper arm bone, to the ulna of the forearm. The ulnar collateral ligament, shown in this slide in a reddish tint, is composed of three separate bundles, including the anterior bundle, outlined in blue, the posterior bundle, outlined in yellow, and the transverse bundle, outlined in green. The anterior bundle is the main functional component of the ulnar collateral ligament. The majority of UCL injuries occur in throwing athletes. Therefore, to understand UCL injuries, you must first understand the mechanics of the normal throwing motion. Whether throwing a baseball, football, or javelin, the mechanics of throwing are relatively constant. This slide shows the phases of a throwing a baseball. The thrower progresses from the wind-up phase to the early cocking phase, then the late cocking phase, the acceleration phase, and finally the follow-through phase. During the late cocking phase, the thrower's shoulder is rotated externally and a significant amount of strain is placed upon the elbow, which is in a flex position. The majority of this strain is transmitted through the ulnar collateral ligament. This slide shows a photograph of a baseball pitcher in the late cocking phase of throwing. The inner portion of the elbow bears a significant amount of tension during this phase of throwing, as shown in the image on. Repetitive throwing is the most common cause of ulnar collateral ligament injuries. Therefore, these injuries are commonly seen in baseball players, especially pitchers, football quarterbacks, and javelin throwers. Occasionally, an athlete will have a single painful throw, but more often, injuries of the ulnar collateral ligament are due to overuse from repetitive throwing. Symptoms of ulnar collateral ligament injuries included elbow pain during throwing activities on the inside or medial aspect of the elbow, as shown in the yellow circle in this image. Athletes usually do not experience pain with routine daily activities other than throwing. Throwing athletes also typically report a loss of throwing accuracy, velocity, and overall throwing effectiveness. Some patients may report numbness and tingling in the small finger and ring finger because the ulnar nerve lies close to the ulnar collateral ligament and may be irritated by injuries of the ulnar collateral ligament. Initially, conservative, non-operative treatment is recommended for most ulnar collateral ligament injuries. This consists of rest, avoidance of throwing activities for approximately six weeks, anti-inflammatory medications, and formal physical therapy. After six weeks, athletes can attempt to resume throwing activities in a slow, gradual fashion by performing a throwing program. Occasionally, PRP injections are recommended for partial injuries of the ulnar collateral ligament. If conservative treatment is unsuccessful and athletes are not able to successfully return to throwing activities, surgery is recommended. Repairing the ulnar collateral ligament is typically not successful, so reconstructing the ligament using a graft is recommended for most patients. The graft is typically taken from the palmaris longus tendon on the patient's forearm, but if this tissue is absent or deficient, a hamstring tendon from the knee may also be used. This slide shows a diagram of the palmaris longus muscle and tendon. The muscle is of minimal functional importance, so the tendon, outlined in the yellow box, can be taken as a graft to reconstruct the ulnar collateral ligament. In order to perform the ulnar collateral ligament reconstruction surgery, also known as Tommy John surgery, the graft is passed through tunnels created in the bones on the ends of the humerus and ulna in an effort to reconstruct the anatomic orientation of the anterior bundle of the ulnar collateral ligament. This slide shows an image of a completed ulnar collateral ligament reconstruction with the graft sutured into place. For further information about UCL injuries, please feel free to contact my office at 480-219-3342 or visit my website at phoenixshoulderandknee.com. Thank you.